Imagine you could run a large language model that can process text with images, detect objects, perform OCR and even generate codes, all that while running on your local machine. So you don't need massive models API like GPT-4O or expensive hardware with a huge VRAM. You can now achieve incredible results with the newly introduced model called MonoInterm VM. So if you're curious about how it works and how to run it, stick around because in this video I will show you everything you need to know. So first we're going to talk about the Mono Intern VL model for a bit and then I will show you how to run it locally. So Mono Intern VL was developed by Shanghai AI Lab and introduced about one month ago. It's a monolithic multi-model large language model or monolithic MLLM for short. So what does that mean exactly? First, multi-model large language models are AI models that can understand both text and other media inputs. And in our case, we're talking about text and images as input. And there are two main approaches to building MLLMs, either monolithic or modular. Modular MLLMs like Lava and InternVL are quite popular and they work by combining a separate visual encoder like Clip Visual Transformer with a large language model. So basically in this framework, the visual encoding and the textual decoding are processed separately. Whereas monolithic MLLMs, as the name suggests, they integrate the visual processing step directly into the LLM. And that leads to a more streamlined and efficient architecture. And as stated in the Mono Intern VL paper, due to their simplicity and unity, monolithic MLLMs can be more easily deployed using existing LLM inference libraries and show superior efficiency than modular MLLMs. All right, so now let's take a quick look into this model architecture. So here we have it, and as we can see, it embeds visual experts directly within a pre-trained large language model. It uses a multi-model mixture of expert structure, which essentially means different parts of the model are specialized for handling either text or images. So let's zoom out a little bit, and here we can see we have two inputs, a text and an image, that are fed into different tokenizers, which are responsible for converting the input data into a format the LLM can understand. So the visual tokenizer takes the input image and divides it into smaller patches, just like how we process images for the visual transformer architecture. Then each patch is transformed into a visual token representing a chunk of the visual information. Finally, a multilayer perceptron projects these visual tokens into the same embedding space used for the textual input and that ensures that both text and image data can be processed together. So this design allows Mono Intern VL to handle very high resolution images, making it incredibly versatile. Next we have the textual tokenizer, which is actually the same one used by the original LLM. It takes text input and converts it into textual token. And as I said, both the textual and visual tokens are then embedded into the same high dimensional space. So I mentioned earlier that this model uses a mixture of expert structure or MOE for short. So what do we mean by that? First, this model uses a decoder only LLM to generate text outputs, basically just like any other large language model. However, as we can see in the paper, alongside the usual language processing component, it includes a set of specialized components used to handle the visual data. So that way we ensure that the visual information is processed by the visual experts and the textual information by the textual experts. And these experts are strategically assigned to either visual or textual tokens using a method called static routing. Now I won't go into details about the pre-training process and the tuning techniques used, you can still check the paper if you're interested. It's clearly and very well explained. As for the results, we can see that it consistently outperforms other monolithic MLLMs, and it even achieves state-of-the-art performance on these benchmarks, surpassing the performance of even modular MLLMs like InternVL 1.5. And when it comes to inference speed, Mono Intern VL is a clear winner, demonstrating up to 67% reduction in first token latency compared to Intern VL 1.5. This means that it can generate responses much faster, making it ideal for real world application. Alright, so now that you have a general overview of this model, let's see how you can run it locally. As usual, you can find this notebook on my GitHub page. And you can run it either locally or you can run it also on Google Colab or Kaggle if you want. 
And you can also follow these steps to set up your Conda environment or any other virtual environment you want to use. Then you should be ready to follow along. So first we import some libraries for numerical computation and image processing. Then we import more libraries required by Mono and Turn VL, like Torch, Torch Vision and Transformers. So all of these required libraries with the required versions are in the requirement.txt file, which you can use it of course to set up your environment. After the imports, we define two constants, ImageNet mean and ImageNet standard deviation. These are used for normalizing images during pre-processing. And these specific values are standard for models pre-trained on ImageNet, like the model we're using today. Now let's take a look at the first pre-processing function, build transform. This function creates a transformation pipeline for pre-processing images before they are fed into the model. So we're creating a pre-processing pipeline using t.compose from Torch Vision. And we start by converting the image mode to RGB. Then we resize it, convert it to a tensor, and then we normalize it using the defined constants. And finally, the composed transformation pipeline is returned. Next up is the find closest aspect ratio function. This function is designed to determine the most suitable aspect ratio from a set of target aspect ratios that best matches the aspect ratio of the input image. And this is a required pre-processing step for the mono intern VL model. Moving on to the dynamic pre-process function, it handles the dynamic processing of images. So basically it adjusts the input image size and split it into blocks based on certain conditions. So it gets as input the image, a minimum and maximum number parameters, and image size. So the minimum and maximum numbers are the minimum and maximum numbers of blocks to generate. And the image size is the size of each block. And you also have the use thumbnail parameter, which when set to true, creates a thumbnail image and append it to the list of processed blocks. And this gives the model an overview of the whole image structure. After that, we have the load image function, which orchestrate the image loading and pre-processing steps we've defined earlier. So first we open the image using pillow, and then we build the transformation pipeline with the specified input size. After that, we process the image dynamically using the dynamic pre-process function. And that splits the image into multiple blocks based on the aspect ratio and grid configuration. Then we loop over the processed images or blocks and we apply the transformation, then we stack all the transformed images into a single tensor. This tensor will then be used as input to the mono and turn VL model. Finally, this function returns the stacked tensor of pixel values. Now we're done with the pre-processing, so let's move on to loading the model and the tokenizer. So since this model is hosted on Hugging Face, we can load it simply using the automodel dot from pre-trained, and we specify the path to the model. And then we can set some parameters, like here we set the quantization configuration. So here I'm using an 8-bit quantization, but you can go as low as 4-bit quantization if you want. And then we set the model to evaluation mode using eval, which is important because we are using this model for inference, so we don't need any training specific behaviors. Similarly, we load the tokenizer using the auto tokenizer from pre-trained. Next, we define the generation config to set the parameters for the text generation. So here we set the max new tokens to 1024, which limits the maximum number of tokens the model can generate. And we set the doSample parameter to 2, which enables sampling, allowing for more diverse outputs. Alright, so now we should be ready to try this model. It can be used with only text as input, or with text and images. And it also supports chatting with the history parameters that you can set here. So let's try it first with just textual input. So we can start, for example, by saying, hello, who are you? And here the assistant responded with, hello, I am an AI assistant whose name is InternVL, developed jointly by Shanghai AI Lab and Sensetime. Okay, awesome. Next, we can try the image captioning and OCR. We can load this image from the paper of this cat, and then we can ask the question, please describe this image shortly. So here we got the response. The image shows a cute cartoon character styled like a cat. The background and the detail of the character are simplified and stylized. All right, 
We can then also ask for a more detailed description. So we say, please describe the image in details. And as you can see, it's taken much more time because it's generating more tokens. All right, so we got the response. This image features a cartoon cat illustration that is labeled PAMI. So you can see that it performed OCR to read this uh, text. The cat has a striking appearance with a light colored fur that resembles an artist's sketch. And we can see that it described the face and the eyes, the nose and mouth, and then the hair, and the body and accessories. And then it says, in summary, this image is a cute, cute illustration of a cartoon of a cartoon cat named Pammy, designed in a stylized and engaging Pammy style, with exaggerated features such as large eyes, rosy cheeks, and a flower on its head, enhancing its enduring look. All right, that's awesome. We can continue with the next example. So here we have this image for the Nobel Prize in Physics for 2024. And we can, for example, ask what is the content of this picture? You can notice that uh, processing images with text takes much more than processing pure text. So here we got the result. The image is an illustration of two individuals portrayed in a vintage style with limited color and line art. Above the illustration text reads the Nobel Prize in Physics 2024. Below the illustration there is a quote from John Hopfield. I don't know if that's accurate, but nevertheless, it says this quote is attributed to the Royal Swedish Academy of Science, which is taken from here. Okay, so then we can follow up with another question. And to do that, we need to pass the history object over here in this parameter. And we got this result. The main color used in this image is monochromatic with shades of tan and beige. However, the illustration style features a limited color palette. That's good. Next, we can try the object detection. So we import this uh, cat image and then we can ask like detect the cat in the image with its bounding box. And to define the object you want to detect, you need to use these ref tags. And then we got this response. So it's generated a bounding box. So let's see if that's accurate. So we need to transform this bounding box from the XY XY format. So here, this is the X and Y of the top left corner. And these are the X and Y for the right bottom corner. And we need to get the format where we have the X center, Y center, and then width and height. And to do that, we will use the regex to recognize this pattern and then transform it using these equations. So now we can display it using the rectangle patch from Matplotlib. And as you can see, this center point will fall around here, which is outside of this image. So basically the detection was not accurate. And that may be due to the fact that we're using a quantized version of the model. So let's move on to the next application, which is code generation. So here, for example, we have this image of mathematical equations and we say convert the formula in the figure to LaTeX format. So here we got the response. We can display it using Markdown. And then we can copy it here to display it correctly. And as you can see, it only got the, the second equation. So let's run it one more time and see the result. All right, so now we've got the response. Let's copy this equation. And as you can see, now we got the first equation. So basically, sometimes it will select one of the equations and sometimes it will extract both equations. So probably this will perform much better if the uh, image we import contains only one equation. All right, so let's go to the final example. 
So we have this image of the rectangle triangle and we need to find the value of x. So we ask this figure shows a right angled triangle. What is the value of x? And as you can see here, it got it right, x equals 12. And here we have the reasoning steps. And it used correctly the Pythagorean theorem. All right, that's awesome. And this is basically the final example. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting and see you in the next one.